and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, where we're dealing in this episode with a whole lot of damage. <laughs> you can see here that the obstruction came through the mirror and onto the other side, right through the door, and then bounced around and almost came out the other side right here. Now, in our shop, we don't do door skins. We're just not that skilled, so we go ahead and we replace the door, but this would call most likely for a replacement anyway. So what I like to do is just go ahead and paint that door ahead of time. Now, on the inside, I really focused on getting the base and the pearl down. On the outside, just put one coat of base. It's not really covered enough, but I just want to get something on there. I also put one coat of clear on the outside as well. You can see that Juan is helping me out getting this new door on the vehicle. So what I'll do is I'll get the door on first, and I'll worry about putting all the guts in later. I just want to get it painted let it dry and then later on once it's all cured I'll assemble it all back together so I'm just making sure my gaps are good everything is good before I do any more adjustments and once it's ready it goes in the booth and everything's sanded here with a 600 grid you can see that door sticks out like a sore thumb now I don't want you to think that's the color code just not matching it's just one coat of base and it is not really even covered we put one coat of clear on there i just want it a similar substrate as the uh, fender and the rear door and guys this is how i do it on all cars i i paint everything on the car i don't want to leave anything to chance i've told you many times before a lot of guys can get away with it and that's great i can't so what we're doing here is uh, we don't have to spray any sealer or anything like that. We don't have to mask anything off. We're going right into our base. This is paint code NH603P. So I'm just getting the paint on for the first coat. You can see I'm using the 3M uh, performance gun at 1.3. And we got that first coat on and it, it didn't look great. I noticed that it's looking a little bit too yellow, but you always want to give yourself a little bit of time with these whites to dry and then take a look. Now you can see I'm taking that the color a little bit further on the rear door towards the bottom because we did have a couple chips we did fix and make sure that anything in the blend area that's fixable uh, we'll go ahead and take care of. Now you notice that my pattern is more of an X in certain circumstances I use more of an X pattern. This is something I developed on my own I'm sure many guys might already use it and it just helps to lose that blend. You can see that the blend is already disappearing with the uh, with the ground coat. If your ground coat does not match do not try to get it to match it with the pearl. Now I noticed that the coat, the ground coat was just a touch too yellow. So I checked the formula and I'm gonna add a little bit of our toner, which is actually 120. Now I'm not using any sort of secret, you know, amount here. I'm just doing it by eye. Just a little bit of experience goes a long way. So I just put a little more binder in there and some uh, reducer. And I just need to lighten up the color just a touch. On camera, it looks good, but in person, I could tell that it just needed a little bit more whiter. So only one coat is all that's needed. So we, uh, we'll go ahead and apply that. I like to give around 10 to 15 minutes in between coats if you can, or just visually look at it, see if it's flash. Does it look dull? If it looks dull, it's ready to go. So I'll put one more coat on here and try to spray it in a somewhat of an X fashion moving in a diagonal fashion and you try your best to work on all of the panels at one time spray all the panels at one time when doing your base if possible clear doesn't matter as much but you want your color to be as consistent as possible and if you don't get enough coverage let's say we didn't get enough coverage on that door well since it was lighter to begin with you might think it's covered because you put base on all three panels but if it is not covered that door will stick out like a sore thumb so make sure it's completely covered if you think you got coverage put on another coat or so just to give yourself that benefit that you know it's going to look good so you want to make sure your base is blended as i talked to you guys before the ground coat is the most important coat do not try to fix it with your pearl the pearl coat is just an effect that is all it is not meant to make it yellower. It's not meant to put on seven coats to match the color. It will make it a little bit, you know, consistent with the rest of the car, but it's more of an effect. And usually two coats is all you really want to do. If you're trying to do five or six coats of pearl, it's because your base isn't right. So don't overcompensate. And that's one of the things that they do it yourselfers do have an issue with because they're at the mercy of the paint shops or the paint stores giving them the actual color. So they're at the mercy of them just, you know, 
hopefully giving them a good color match and you know sometimes you do have to put those four or five coats of pearl just to kind of get it the right color but that just makes the pearl look ugly so the best type of pearl is the least amount of pearl possible you can see we did a little bit of a tack here and we're not having any sort of um any sort of uh, overspray coming off i use that extra slow reducer and guys it just lands so smooth on the edge and especially now i'm spraying uh, at nights again because um, my regular job is, job is I'm a school teacher and I come in around 4 p.m. and I'll leave around 8 so the booths are around 80 degrees 83 so it's much nicer than like 100 degrees <laughs> in the regular daytime so yeah so we're putting on some pearl here and I'm spraying the whole thing at once this is the first coat I'll put on two more diagonal here I, I will say about this particular paint I mean, you could spray it with your eyes closed. It's just that good. You know, the Sickens uh, paint, it's just that good. I mean, here I'm dropping the pressure a little bit, and I'm putting the second coat on from a little bit of a distance. But even if I wasn't perfect with it, this paint just lays down so smooth that you don't, it takes the guesswork out. You know, I've had paint brands where you have to work at it. So if you spend a little bit more money, get yourself a decent paint, it's going to make you look like a better painter. And that's what I say. I said the paint just makes me look good because really it just lays itself down. This is a beautiful blend. It's ready for a clear coat. You know, you can't even tell where the transitions are between the, the original clear and the, uh, the base coat. So we're going to jump into the clear coat. You might notice that I have, uh, have it taped off. You know, it's just crazy because on these PPS cups or any cups, they'll have the buildup. And the buildup, uh, sometimes it will come off even though you blow the cup off. And it will only come off in a white paint job. You know, you might get like a little bit of residue from something that came off of that PPS cup, and you'll only see it in the white. So take a little time, put a little tape on it, just hold it in. You know, if you can't blow it off, give yourself uh, that much more of an advantage. You know, if it's going to happen, it will happen. We all know about Murphy's Law, right? You know, if something's bound to happen, it's just going to happen. So kind of eliminate as many factors as you can. Don't leave anything to chance. Now, we're using the DV1 here for 1.3. The biggest comment I get is, Brian, how do you not get runs? Every time I hear that, you move so close and you do so many passes. But you guys have to you have to understand, this is not a SADA. You know, those SADAs, those bigger guns, they put so much material on so quick that you can move faster. This is not a fast gun. You know, so you can move a little bit slower with the actual gun. And if you actually were there in person and looking at it, you'll see that it's not putting on like a beautiful wet coat, the first coat. I'm just looking to get the paint on the surface. This is my glue. I'm applying my glue for the second coat to really go down. This is my foundation, right? I'm not crazy about how it looks. I'm not worried if there's a little bit dry here and there. I'm okay with it. I'm letting it go because clear will stick to clear much easier than it will stick to regular base and that's where a lot of you guys are getting your runs you're putting your clear coat on way too heavy for that first coat guys give yourself time between the first and second coat if you need to put a third on even more time between the second and third and what you'll do is you allow those solvents to flash off it'll become tacky and that second coat will lay on there much sooner and I tell you all the time give these chemicals time do not rush these chemicals they need time to release their solvents. And if you wait and you're patient enough and put the second or third coat on later, like, you know, 10 minutes or 15, 20 minutes after, you're going to have a better job. But we all want instant results. We all want to see what it's going to look like right away. But, you know, the car is not going to leave for another day or so anyway. So if we just took the extra 15 to 20 minutes just to take our time, we can do a much better job. And that's something I really learned here. So this is my second coat about 10 minutes later. And that's all it really needed. Now, this job came out pretty clean overall. I did have a cluster of dirt for whatever reason on that top of the door. But everything got buffed out. I had a couple specks on the front door. and uh, But white buffs so easy. It's not a problem. And I was really, really happy with how clean it came out. That's a little cluster. There's about four or five. Like, when there's one piece of dirt, there's, like, three that are usually around it. And, uh, you know, guys, I don't get the best, cleanest jobs. But they're they're good enough to denib, denib a few panel, few nibs here and there on every panel. And, it, and it's good to go for the most part. I'm working on my cleanliness. We're actually going to be uh, doing a booth video on uh, installing the carpet and 
even furthermore doing a peelable or washable coating on the walls and focusing on changing my filters that much more often now this is the car outside the next day and it looks really good there's nothing like pulling out a car into the sun for the first time and just seeing how well it looks and Guys, there's been many times when I pulled those cars out in the sun when I was new to this, and I did not wait, like the way it looks, and I pulled it right back in so no one would see. Sand it down type of deal. Nothing happened. Redo it again. <laughs> you know, yeah, and we'll never forget those moments when you had multiple redos, but, you know, the redos just kind of go away after a while. So, again, this... Uh, car door back together you might note that my shirt's not too sweaty now but I do go through three or four shirts a day and as this time lapse you know moves on the humidity down here in South Florida is something else I've got to say I put a shirt on and at least 20 to 30 minutes later full of sweat you can already see my backside you know it's just accumulating but I think I'm doing much better with my personal life and hydrating myself and trying to get myself back to a younger feeling of you know losing some some of that body fat and feeling better because you know you I started to feel a little bit sluggish in this job and tired you know I I work from 7 30 to, to 3 at the school and then 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock every night so you know I want to try to you know, move my health in a direction that I want it to be to improve my my lifestyle. But uh, anyways, enough of that. We're getting the harness into the car. The funny story is, you know, this particular door, the window would not go down when we first had it. And I was there with the adjuster and we, we cut the cables to the regulator and the window just would not go down. Well, it turns out that the obstruction went through the door and it punctured the regulator guide and it put like a nudge in the uh, guide so the window just could not go down at all but we ended up replacing the regulator did all that fancy stuff i get a lot of satisfaction out of replacing a door and putting everything back together but this is the finished product and uh guys tell me what you think about it i'm very happy with this uh Usually there'll be a reason that I can find to repaint any car, but uh, not with this one. I'm pretty pretty happy with the way this one came out. If you had done anything different in this video on this job, let us know in the comments. Paint Society is all about the true society, learning from one another, helping each other out. So I was really happy about this one, the way it, it came out. You can see the door jam, everything matches really good. Got the replacement door sticker on there. And guess what, guys? The window works again. It is good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you. Don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.